Hey everyone, good evening or good morning, whatever you are. This is Jabra Ghanem again with you discussing the Pearl of Great Price. So the reading this week, we're still in Genesis 5, 5 from the Old Testament and Moses 6 from the Pearl of Great Price. And one thing that I would always remind you of during the course of at least reading the Torah portion of the Old Testament of the Tanakh is that the Old Testament is the Torah is, is split into 52 sections and each book of the Torah is, or the Torah the first five books of Moses is called with different names in Hebrew so today we're in Bereshit and the first portion of Bereshit which is Genesis is called Bereshit too so we're chapter 5 of Genesis is is that too this is important. Again, we're reading. We're trying to read the Old Testament, the Torah, from a Jewish perspective with Jewish eyes, as well as the Book of Moses and the Pearl of Great Price. That's very important. So, yesterday I had a long-winded sort of discussion lesson. I didn't plan it to be like that, but I feel, as I was preparing my notes for today, I felt the time spent there was well spent because I'm going to be using some of those points that I made yesterday in, in today's lesson. So in Moses 6, uh, we have, you know, the, the whole saga of Cain and Abel is, and you know, sort of ended. And the Lord is, is working on reestablishing order on earth. Humans have messed up that first round. So... Adam, uh, Adam hears the voice of God again, and he calls his children to repentance. That's how chapter 6 of the book of Moses and the Pearl of Great Price stands. Adam heard the voice of God, and he called his children to repentance. And he has another son. He calls him uh, Seth. And basically he feels, he feels that Abel has been sort of replaced. You can't replace you can't replace a son, but it seems that Abel died without leaving a posterity. So Adam feels now I'm going to have this righteous posterity through this this son. Remember what I said yesterday about the ancient people, especially in the ancient Near East, they wanted to be remembered. They wanted to leave a legacy. And in that culture, children are the legacy. Definitely for Moses, children, he's, he's one of the children of Jacob. And uh, having children is as important as legacy. So he's, he emphasizes this point here in the Pearl Great Prize. Now, uh, when... And, uh, Seth has a son and he calls him Enos. And Enos basically can mean human. The root is Anasa, which basically refers to humans and humanity. But it also can refer to someone who's kind, who's gentle, whose company is, whose company is good, someone you, you enjoy being with. And this Enos, this Enos son is, you know, apparently a good son because now that posterity is in verse 4 talks about them calling the name of the Lord and the name of the Lord and they are repenting and they are living the commandments and they are keeping they are starting to keep a census of everyone who's who's alive and we see that and you know when they start listing the posterity of Adam so we talked yesterday about the language, the language of Adam being pure, and those records are are being written in that uh, in that language. Now, in verse nine, uh, there is something that caught my eyes today, which is that the Lord here speaks about. He basically reminds reminds Adam and Eve that he created humans in his own image, but he also reminds them that the earth is his footstool and what is the significance of that again yesterday i referred to the ancient cultures basically believing in their local gods the god lived amongst them in his own sacred space that they built for them and they sort of pampered the gods and offered sacrifices and you know they were special people because of that and the jews certainly will 
will adapt that mentality later. Uh, but here in the beginning, the Lord is reminding Adam that the whole earth, all humanity uh, on it is his footstool. This is his world. It's all, it's the responsibility of everyone, all of us to, you know, sort of worship God and remember him and, and repent and do whatever he commands us, commands us to do. But unfortunately, as we see later on in, in verse 15, what we have is, you know, we have, we're having these patriarchs living many, many years. And I think that was by design. I don't think those hundreds of years that they lived was necessarily an exaggeration or some misnomer that we have in there. I think it's intentional because they are just having all of this posterity and multiplying and replenishing the earth and doing exactly what the Lord wanted. But with this growth, um, we've, we've, we're all familiar with the phrase growing pains. With this growth, humans also are causing not only their earthly fathers, but their heavenly father, a lot of pain. Because Satan just keeps this control over their hearts. He still keeps control over our hearts, but and he was doing this from the beginning, from the very beginning. And it says in, in verse 15, there are, you know, the sons of Adam, the sons of man multiplied upon all the face of the earth. And Satan had power over their hearts and he, he basically caused rage in their hearts, caused rage in their hearts. And so we have wars, we have bloodshed, and man is killing his fellow man. And here is, here is the, the, the key phrase, the secret works and seeking authority. And I'm referring to verse 15 here in Moses 6. This is the ultimate analysis of power. It's there from the beginning. And definitely Joseph Smith understood it. Moses understood it. Adam understood it. Men love power. Men love authority. And I would almost say men cannot man cannot be trusted with authority because man tends to just want control and then what results is wars and bloodshed. You know, you think of the drug trade, you think of the weapons trade, you think of all of these things. These are basically master mayhans, Satan's uh, trades. You know, they are trades where you're exchanging life for money. Life is nothing. Money is everything. Power is everything. And this is this is there from the beginning. So then we have the census in, in verse 6, in, in verse uh, 17, and, uh, you know, all the way until verse 22. Now, the purpose of this census, sort of, I know we tend, definitely me, we tend to skip those names of people. I definitely like reading through them sometimes because I like the significance of names, maybe looking for a significance in the story. But the purpose of writing the census in, in these scriptures is basically what I talked about yesterday, you know, legacy the patriarchs talking about their legacy, the humans they are leaving behind to fulfill the Lord's commandment. That's very important for them. These, this record, this book of life, is sort of their pyramid. And Moses, I'm sure, when he was writing down all of these names from the book of life, uh, is basically thinking legacy, is affected by the legacy of, you know, man building pyramids and structures or whatever to to uh, be remembered. So my wife and I, when I first met my wife, Stacy, uh, she, I told her how many names I have. And so my name is Jabra, Farid, Jabra, Yusuf, Habib, Jarius, Jabra, name. And there is a whole other, a bunch of other names that my grandfather taught me. I remember the moment when I was a kid and climbing the stairs up to grandpa's house one night after spending some time working with him in his farm and 
he was teaching me this and he made sure I memorized them. He made sure I memorized them. So that's that's legacy. That's how you that's how you remember people. So that's basically what's on Moses' mind when he's writing all of this. But he's also trying to emphasize that point about humans multiplying, humans instead of replenishing the earth, they are establishing chaos on it. And that is that is one thing I think about when in Islam in the Quran, and I couldn't didn't have the time actually I was lazy didn't have the time to go look up the exact reference. But in the the Quran documents this instance when God first creates Adam and the angels are shocked that he is creating this human to populate the earth and their argument is why create this person when we are here worshiping you night and day why are you creating this human he will bring nothing but chaos and corruption to the earth that you have created and definitely that was probably in satan's mind when he wanted to enforce his plan and make sure that nobody is lost uh, because this is the nature of man unfortunately but the cure for it is listed over and over again in Moses 6. So in the first verse, it talks about repentance. And then, you know, the Lord now, in verse 22, it talks about sons of Adam who preached righteousness, who uh, prophesied and called everyone to repentance and called everyone to, uh, to faith. And so that is when the Lord is wanting to reestablish order on earth. And that's when he calls yet another man, Enoch. Now, in, um, in Hebrew and Arabic, he's either Achnuch or Hanuch. I have this uh, 800 years old Arabic translation. It's... Tra it's transcribed from Hebrew by Sadia Gawan. He was a, a famous rabbi, famous Arab rabbi from Egypt, from the area of Fayyum. And he spells the name Hanukh. And the word is Hanak. This is, this is your Hanak in Arabic and in Hebrew, meaning mouth. And Enoch refers to that in uh, in verse 31 when the lord calls him he says why are you calling me lord my tongue is heavy i am someone who has a heavy tongue i'm a boy i'm a lad and everyone hates me and it might have been a speech impediment like moses but also when you say someone in in arabic in, in semitic languages in general in that culture when you say someone's tongue is heavy it also means that he has that uh, he says things as they are probably like a child in many ways uh, who says the first thing that comes to his mind about something that he likes or doesn't like there is no filter and so enoch might have been that kind of person I'd like to think that he was saying things, calling people to repentance, and I'll discuss Enoch more tomorrow, but he is he is this wild man, and we'll talk about this wild man point tomorrow. I'll talk about this wild man thing tomorrow, but this is, this is what I have for you today, repentance, the gospel being preached from the beginning, repentance, faith, are the way to restore order to the universe, and to our world and overcome what Satan always does, which is he stirs trouble in the hearts of man. He stirs us to be angry at each other. He stirs us to believe that life and money are interchangeable, and it's not. And that's what the Savior ultimately will teach us through the atonement. Uh, but that's for another day. Uh, any comments would be appreciated and uh, don't forget to subscribe to receive this every time i post a new video thank you so much and i say this in jesus name amen